Good evening, it's 7 o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Larry Tuttle. I'm here to hopefully cover the review that was initially scheduled with the Historical Commission. A comments on the proposed building that we presented to the board for site plan review on the 16th. And basically, uh, we did not mesh our schedules with historical commissions. Uh, and so now, it's, I was told this afternoon to show up at the start of this meeting to address that. Right. Um, David's here, right? David, is, is it the historical commission evidently is wants to get out of the review business uh, for the planning board? You're talking to me, David? Yes. Yes, uh, I got a public statement from the Historic Commission that they are not going to be part of the review process on this particular okay. project. And so they've asked that the planning board make their recommendation or decision. Okay. Yeah, that, and that's fine because we were reusing the Historical Commission as a review board um, at their request already. And it worked out for both both ways. And if they decide now that they don't want to get they want to get out of that that task, so be it. And we will take over that responsibility if you would. And like I, as far as I'm concerned, when we saw the plans, they looked nice. Uh, we didn't have any plans, but just a couple of the bases because it was in the overlay district. Yep. Um, we said before you agreed to it. You said me. Uh, let us a motion to approve the plan as for the um, architectural piece of it. Because we've already reviewed the approved the plan subject to that. Right. Well, second and motion. Not participating. Okay. Oh, that's right. Um, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion, motion passes 401 abstention. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, you we just hang on to any of those that you want. We just need to look for the and if you could um, email this to Hadley Planning at the end, yeah, Hadley Planning at Hadley MA. Okay. Thank you very much. Just for getting through the YouTube. Okay, very good. Good luck. Dan Heiser, out in front of the mall. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I was last here in February 2016 to uh, permit out parcel buildings at Mount Park and Mount Hadley. And I am uh, back today to um, show you a modified uh, site plan, a slightly modified site plan, uh, just as a, a recap. Uh, in 2016, February 2016, we were approved for two new uh, buildings along Russell Street, approximately 10,000 square feet each. Uh, this was site plan review under special permit for farmland preservation bylaw under transfer of development rights. Uh, what I'm bringing back to you today, and what I'm hoping you'll see is a very minor amendment to this site plan, is uh, still two buildings uh, totaling about 23,000 square feet, uh, which is roughly 3,000 square feet greater than what it was previously. Yes, sir. And uh, we are, uh, we've received very positive feedback on the first plan, but we feel this new one really gives us uh, more flexibility with leasing uh, these spaces, provides greater furniture along Russell Street, and creates an even safer vehicular and pedestrian circulation uh, throughout this out, par out parcel area. Uh, so what I'm hoping, uh, We'll do today is uh, agree that this is uh, minor in in, uh, in nature, and that hoping we won't have to go back through the public hearing process. Uh, happy to answer any questions to you as well. Really welcome. Okay. Right. Um, um, let you finish. I'll thank you. And then, um, so we are under uh, transfer of development rights as well. This layout allows us to recapture more parking area and asphalt area so our uh, our 
efficiency in parking area is reduced under this plan, so we have improved that as well. We also uh, still are providing a uh, pedestrian friendly space in between the two buildings as well. Uh, I believe we have adequate parking under ratio standards, about 5.7 uh, parking spaces per thousand square feet, so we still feel like we have sufficient parking to be able to cover the demand uh, that is out there that would be needed by these two buildings. What's the difference in size between the two buildings total? Sure. Uh, these two buildings are 23,000 and change, and the previous ones were 20,000 and change, so about 3,000 square feet. Larger? Yes. Okay. What are they going to look like? That's what I want to know. Yeah, they're going to be... Uh, that's, that's what we want to see. That's what you want to see. We want to see a drawing of what yeah. they're going to look like. Okay. Um, uh, very similar to what we were proposing uh, back in 16. Obviously, I think, though, okay. retail has changed a little bit so they are going to be they are going to be modified so i'm happy to show those i don't want to leave them to open the public here with you, right? i don't think so a uh, couple of questions sure. um <clears throat> is this going to affect the transfer development rights calculation yes it actually will reduce the amount of um the fee we've, we've increased our parking to, uh, work with us, so, and i can provide that to you as well so when you do come in next time, uh, just have an indication of square footage yeah. and parking available because I, I noticed you had some parking places, but you know, to count them all out in sure. square footage. And also, too, the uh, there was a considerable discussion about South Maple Street and if could you when you come back with a plan, if we have to sign it, would like to see what your final outcome is yeah. on the. The traffic control there. Sure. Yes. Did you engage the traffic engineer that we appeared before us a couple of times? We did, yes. Yeah, so we he just kind of disappeared, didn't we? We hired Ron Mueller and Associates yeah. uh, to do, we did multiple um, reconfigurations along South Maple and then uh, Foss and O'Neill were the peer reviewers of that. And between um, our engineer and then Foss and O'Neill came to a solution, or one that was approved at the last hearing two years ago, and that would be the uh, the plan that we'd be moving forward with to the select board, I believe we have to go to the select board for okay. approval of that road. So no, no change from that. Yeah. So we need a rendering, sure. we okay. need a TDR recalculation. <coughs> to call it rendering. Sure. <coughs> but yeah. what it actually will look like when it's built. Not it'll look something like this. What will it look like? Sure. Because yes, that's what we'll hold you to to build it to. Okay. So it meals. The rendering of the TDR recalculation. Oh well, uh, parking. Park. And what's going to happen to these other lots here? Yeah. So we don't own the people's pension that's under separate. That is still um, occupied by Vision Street Showcase and AT and T. So nothing right now will be. What is that? It's under lease. Yes. Yeah. So to those two uh, retailers lease that building. Does all this land belong to WS? That's correct. Yeah, the uh, Manny's and the KFC do. Mm -hmm. And right now, those are not part of this development plan, but this plan does. Do you have ten tenants for these buildings already? We have um, we have some that are signed, yes, and then uh, another one or two that I that aren't signed yet that I can't. Did, did anybody request with. signage for this? The only, the only thing coming with sign it once they start to yeah. build is put the standard there, just like across the street. Okay. Um, okay. So, I mean, basically, yes, we can approve this without another site, but without sure. holding public hearing. Okay. We do want to see what it's going to look like with, with, with what this inquiry is at. Okay. I can send that over to planning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. And we meet again in two weeks of tonight if you can make it. Sure. Same in, informational session. Part yes. Of yeah. Can you bring a plan of the design building you had before? This is what we had. This is what we chose. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. All right. Yeah. That would be Thank you guys very much. You guys want to keep those in? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Roberts. Thank you. Uh, Tom Brady and I are both going to speak to you tonight. We'd like to uh, spend some time and introduce 303 Russell Street, our plans for that property, which is better known as the Kitsa site. Uh, I am in the process of uh, working through the approval process on that. 
Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, we went to ZBA the other night and got approval uh, for the funding. Um, so that's in process. Um, so I think I'm going to let Tom explain. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about signage? Sure. You want to acquaint you with a site plan and answer any questions and concerns that you have? Yeah. Um, so I think you're all familiar. Yeah, if we get to bring this up. So I think you're all familiar with the site. Um, you can hand out the aerial. So it's the Kisa Lumber Site 303 across the street. It's very noted. We're in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, at the end of January, to get a finding, it has 197.2 feet of frontage. It's in the industrial zoning district, uh, which requires 250 feet, but it's been in that configuration uh, from before zoning. And so the proposal will ultimately be um, in front of you. Um, it is going to be a harbor freight building and then a Rayos building, so we'll have a, a retail sales building here in the front. It's about a little shy of 16,000 square feet. I think we're proposing about 45,000 square feet of parking, and then we've got um, what would be the Rayos coffee roasting retail distribution facility back here. Yeah, so this, it doesn't include 305 Russell Street. That's completely separate. It's owned by somebody separate. This is currently owned by 1836 Development Company. Uh, this is RC building. So <coughs> this is that's going to stay. That will stay. The building. Will the, stay. the building will stay. And then, quite frankly, we're having discussions with Steve Lewis um, to see if that'd be something that they'd want to take over and change their access, etc. But those those conversations have not begun in earnest. Um, so this would be some configuration and some footprint about no more than a 5,000 square foot Rayouts building um, back there and then like I said the 16,000 or so square feet back here is about 20,000 square feet of the parking so they would each meet those uh, parking requirements the, the two to one and then if needed for whatever reason because we have to go through the con con process Either the wetlands are greater than, or we have to nip and tuck some places. We would probably look to use some transfer of rights to get that two to one ratio down. Um, and so, part of this was just to introduce the project to you: commercial site plan review, special permit, business use in the aquifer, and then the, the uh, stormwater uh, permit. But also to get your feedback on the signage. Um, you know, we looked at the bylaw given the. These are each single tenant. We saw it as no more than 64 square feet. So what you'll find in your packet is we got a, a few, we have a few different configurations. We know how the planning board is attentive to what the zoning bylaw says and what signs are actually provided. So we've gone with uh, you know a 64. These and these are all separate, uh, and we've got a floor plan in there as well. So the first one you'll see is a 64 square foot, this is a center entrance. So this would be facing north and the entrance would be in the center of the building. So on the site plan, it would be right here. Um, what we've got here is a, a corner, like vestibule entry here. So this would change the layout a little bit. Um, I believe this is with a 64 square foot sign only on one side. And then we wanted to gauge the board's interest in potentially supporting a, a variance to allow, this is 135 square feet overall. That's the center entrance. And then we've also got that rendering showing it on the corner, again, only one of the sides. Um, and then we have, a, this is 250 square feet on each for 500 square feet total, which we don't, I don't think, is uh, realistic, but we had it there anyways. The building is going to be about 130 to 150 feet back from the roadway, so set back a bit. Um, and we are in the process of negotiating a lease with Harbor Freight. And one of the things they're going to want is it's a very tight timeline, um, but just to have signage. And so we wanted to come to you to get a sense of where can we go with this. And then the last one you have in your packet is the, the freestanding sign, the pylon sign. It won't exceed 64 square feet. It will probably be put uh, over here on the site plan. And then both signs. All together, this will be about 75% of that 64 square feet, and then this will be the balance of, sorry, I don't know the math off the top of my head. In general, 
move to the planning board has no issue with a larger size sign. However, when we've gone to town meeting to try to make that change, we haven't even gotten the majority. The town was, as recently as I want to say three years ago, was very much against granting a larger sign for any reasons. So for that reason, I would have to say that we wouldn't be in favor of a larger than 64 square foot sign. Okay. Um, You're yeah. speaking for yourself. I certainly, for businesses, would, would bend over backwards so they can stay in business. And signage, to me, is very important for them. So I support businesses with signs. I think this is crazy what, what they're doing. It's an industrial zone. It's our business zone. <clears throat> they need to advertise. They need to make money. <clears throat> does, uh, That's does, my feeling. Does Harbor Freight Tools have an online site, website, where you can buy their tools? I don't know. I know I get advertisements in, in, yeah, in the email. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think a lot of their stuff is, I mean, stepping back without knowing too much of their business model, if they're looking to invest in Hadley and come to a site on Route 9, when you see what Amazon has done to some of the other, you know, the Walmart's not expanding since, but they're attracting. You know, I would have to think that this use is going to be something where people come to and don't just order. I've never heard of them before. No. Oh, no. 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 They have one of the Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're not getting it. I mean, only tools, lowest prices. If you need something you want to do, want to marble your bathroom? I, I, I got a, a, a cousin who's very much into high quality woodwork. And he says he buys everything but a cutting tool at Harbor Place. Everything works. He yeah. says high quality cutting tools, nothing against them. He says, Maybe not so much, but he's everything else. He says it's good stuff. So when we start a homeowner, started looking into it. It's a still a family business. It's not. Uh, it's not on the stock market. They're funded by themselves. Where they have 800 stores, something like that. And they're, they're based out of California, but no franchises. They're all owned yeah. by the company. I know. I don't know if you can go online and buy stuff, but you can go online and see what they have. Yes. I don't know if you can buy. So, in answer to your earlier question. Then, Playing off what John said, I would support a zone change to a uh, bylaw change to allow a larger signage, but I would not support a variance. You know, the uh, kind of understanding where you're coming from, every national chain company that comes in wants a bigger sign. And the town has spoken to us, they do not want bigger signs. They do not want internally eliminated signs, so they have to be. Uh, you know, the gooseneck kind of, of, of lighting. That and lighting is okay. The other side of the editorial comment is uh, <coughs> this won't make any sense to you, but it will to Barry. Zares, Almies, Walcombe, Steigers have the biggest signs in town. They are no longer in town. So signs alone do not make the business thrive. Do, do you folks have any particular preference about the front sign? You know, the center entrance or the corner entrance. The only reason <coughs> whatever works best for this. Is, is it going to be a subdivision or is this just going to be a single lot? Because if they were going to be a subdivision, you'd have the ability to have two sides. But if it's going to be a single lot, which it appears that it's going to be. Condominium Because okay. I don't think we have the ability to subdivide. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so one side. I would, well, you have six, you can have divide it. You can take your 64 into more than one. Correct. Right. What about two signs? Just 32. Well, right. Rail doesn't need a big sign for their facility. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. rail doesn't yeah. need much of a sign for their facility. You'd be happy to have that up there and a small sign on its building. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know if they um, had a preference before we've shown them either of these. What we got from them was a center entrance, but Barry started to think about the orientation of the building on the lot with the, the traffic on the design and what would make most sense. So the roads were on an angle like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but how just thought it would be <clears throat> how are you gonna see that sign on this side of the building anyway? Well I think it has to be we had hoped we could do one there and one there. You know? So if you're driving this way you can see it, if you're driving this way you can see it. You know, that said far back, Steve, it's set beyond Steve well, you, Lewis coming you could, that way, right? You got yeah. Taylor Rinto right in front of you. You're not going to see a whole lot. And there's a billboard right here, so it's. You're not going to see a whole lot coming on that line. corner. That sight line. The sign I'm going to draw you in there is the fact that you're going to buy some tools. That thing is going to draw you in. 
Do you know how these national companies are? They all want that. They all want to be the same. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. right, Barry. Yeah. 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 Well, what's your uh, team plan for what board are you going to go through before? Because obviously conservation is going to be critical to the amount of square footage that's going to be available for parking. That's our next yeah. We're working on making sure the site is clean. Uh, since I've become involved, we've engaged the uh, LSP to investigate the site. So we're doing that right now. Uh, we think we will be going for compound very soon. So. Yeah, there's, a, there's an outstanding order of conditions on the site to allow the existing buildings to come down, the site to be scraped, and then have you know, 12 to 18 inches of soil on it, not touching the wetlands. Once that's closed, we'll go in front of CONCOM for a notice of intent for this. As part of that will be delineation of the or delineation of the stream bank and then delineation in earnest of the wetlands on site. And then that will really solidify. We hope to move through simultaneously um, just because this is a pretty tight timeline that we're on. Well, and plus, this is a great example of uh, the subterranean uh, under the parking lot each field type catch. So this one's going to be a little bit different, actually. So after discussions with the Department of Environmental Protection, they thought that having this actually sheet flow to some sort of... That's, that's we just yeah. 15 uh, test holes out there last week. Yeah. And you can guess what it is. It's like clay. clay. Yeah. So that's hard and purpose. I was going to say, an, an, an underground system isn't going to do much. No, no, it was just hold, contain, and then. Yeah. Well, you, you, you know the routine. You've been through this enough before. So you don't, don't wait for us to go to the various engineers once you, you get a design done. You can get, you know, work simultaneously. You can go to the tight, tight timeline. You know, talk to your engineer, have them get involved with a reviewing engineer, to choose which one you want to use both ways and get going on that. Don't 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 uh, well we're gonna do this now we're gonna do this is A B C you can go A C A C B D E F all all at once. That's okay. right. Okay. Okay. Is there a cover underneath the bike path right here? This one is Yes. Is that broken state as a rough straight open no a straight no cover. There's one here, you'll see right there a box culvert, and then there's one, there's a double lock culvert there. Obviously there's this takes state drainage too. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know so where that just takes the block. It might like just take across. I think that, but we're not allowed to touch that. We're yeah. have to That's a mm -hmm. stream. Consider a river. You have to say to Where does this go once it crosses here? You know? I don't know yet. I believe that goes west into there's a he goes by the pump station though right? by the pump station there's a i believe it goes westward towards the pump station there's like a uh, little bit of a crevice for lack of a term <coughs> there where it goes there. back under mill valley road and out to fort river through that meandering whatever you want to call it through the lane's prop nothing laid but it, the back side but it eventually ends up it goes across, I believe, I don't quote me, it goes across Mill Valley, then it flows, and this goes west, across Miss Mill See, Valley. It goes way up to Parsons? No, 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 not to Parsons. It goes east towards north, South Maple Street, and if you look on the, south, on, on, on the right side of South Maple Street, as you're going down, there's like a, yeah. a ditch, and I believe then it goes into Fort River. Hmm? A loose chips, I think. Well, they'll yeah. find out. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, uh, any general comments about the project? Any changes we should start uh, thinking about now? Or? You know, it's a permitted use and a permitted zone, and <laughs> it's a plain block building. And yeah, yeah I think the only issue is going to be the drainage. Yeah. yeah. But the drainage, how much can use on the site with wetlands? Right. As yeah. far as the rest of the stuff, I mean, yeah. you know, signage and Lighting and lighting is a big deal because you've got no hoses and there's no homes nearby. So, yeah. as you said, the wetlands are a big deal. There's an outstanding order of conditions that's um, said. So, I did, and it says that I have to, uh, in order to tear the buildings down, which they want, so they can see if there's any more wetlands there. So, I engaged uh, Randy Iser to go out and, and then I have to put the soap pads around here. And then they clear the buildings off 
and then they'll reinvestigate to see if there's any more wetlands. You know, they're uh, cognizant of what happened up by uh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not no, the Cumbria Road site. Right, right. Yeah, they found the wetlands underneath, underneath the, the south of the chips. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do that in that order. Right. And we'll be back to submit. Probably pretty soon. <laughs> Good to see that it's a good tax base again. Um, we'll take Ms. Nugent, just to have a sign. Lucian? You signed in? Oh. You signed in? Did you just yes. sign in for the sign? Come on up. We're going to take you before we, okay. we don't make, make you wait. Okay. What, what's your name here? Uh, Orchid. Orchid. It is Orchid. Okay. Oh, this is for uh, Mr. Roberts. Oh, no, no, it's not. This is, this is the. Uh, the, no, spot, the nail spot across from the uh, have the auto service, the auto yes, yes the new building there. So then, this is the sticker in front of the building that just like this. Okay. And there's a sign on the street. This is going to be cleared by how high? Um. Okay. What's this going to be? That's what I asked. What's this height? <laughs> What's that inside the window? Please? Inside the window. Is right. And this one's going to be. This one's going to be at the outside side. Uh, this is the um, outside side. This is the indoor side. Okay, right out the door. This is that. This one. This one's going to be in a window. Yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Uh, actually, this is going to be in the window. Yes, going to be in the window. Well, we open the door, there's another door going, so it's going to be second door. Oh, this is going to be inside the door. This is going to be the, uh, the outside one. Yes. They can talk in, looks like about 20 square feet. But the inside, they don't care about the inside. The inside, the building doesn't matter. What do you have for a sign out uh, by the street? Is there going to be any, any, any sign at the street? Um, on the sign, should the, um, the Okay. Oh, it's probably like something like uh, uh, the other side of the like a strip sign that says, "What do you What do you Did he come in for? No, he hasn't come in yet. So, but we are not approving it at the street. We're only approving the, the door, the building. So what are you planning on opening with this? Uh, hopefully. Um, on the 22nd of February. And he may come in for a sign on the street? Because I thought he put something on the street. Like that. You know, so, um, you we, get him to come in here, right? So, so that's important this. So this is two feet by roughly five feet. Two, two by five, so ten, 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 square feet. ten square feet for the one that's on the outer door. And now ten square feet on the other But that is going to be visible. Right. Yeah. Um, this is a on that. This is the 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 sign for the building. This is going to be inside the door with the This is the This is the uh, the building is divided by half, so one is on the What we're seeing is you're not going to see this from the outside very well. When you open the outside door, then you're going to see this sign, correct? You're going to have two signs, one on the inside and one on the door? It's just, it's just both doors when we walk in. Bottom line, she's allowed multiple signs. They're allowed, but they're allowed one, one, one not to exceed yeah. Yeah. Is it 40 square feet for, for business, I believe? She's only putting in 20 square feet at the at the top end. So she's okay. She's got enough. She's got less front, less square footage of sign than required. 
And you don't have a design of the sign outside the street? Um, no. Because uh, the, the owner haven't decided what type of uh, signs that I'm putting on the top of the building. So for now, we're just going to use a sticker on the window. So they're going to come in and do all that. That's what you're talking about. Okay, so we're just approving the sign of the door, so yes. So I'll move to approve the sign of the door. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Can we do this? Yes. Do you have any sign on the street? A temporary sign? Yeah, 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 something like that. Keep temporary sign on the street is okay. Yeah. And, uh, talk to the building inspector about yes. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Senior Center. How you guys? So I just felt one. Oh, I work for the Colliers. We're the town of Hadley's Corners Project Manager on the project. This is Chris Wanda from EDM. They're the architects on the project. Mike Petron from DHB, the civil engineer. So currently we're at the middle point of the design for the senior center. So we wanted to meet with you guys to kind of show you where we're at in design. We're not at a point right now where we're formally ready to submit an application for approval, but collect any feedback we can and kind of implement that the design. So I'll get into the site design and then I'll hand it over to Chris to speak to the building facade design. So we have 46 Middle Street here. Um, on plan here, we're kind of emphasizing the, the east end of the lot. You have the existing senior center here, edge of pavement here. Um, so at the beginning of site design and understanding where we're going to locate the building, we went through a couple exercises understanding what the site looks like if the building's centered on the remaining portion of the lot and then parked on the sides. I have it towards the east end of the lot and have a, a center parking lot that you know, senior center folks could utilize overflow for region folks could utilize and, and overflow the library could utilize. So, what is that going to be? Uh, so this is the, the senior center footprint currently we showed at the east end of the lot. Um, right now, so that's currently the existing location is currently the legion overflow parking. Where, okay, and where, where is the parking going to remain? On the east side? The, so this is the new parking design so right the parking here. is going to be moved, okay, to the west. Gotcha. To the west side of the building. So the idea is you enter in uh, from Middle Street, all the main staff and occupants for the senior center enter through Middle Street, and they have their parking lot here. And if there are any occupants that are taking a, a van drop-off service, they can come in and get dropped off at the main entry of the building and loop out. Um, the senior center building committee made it um, highlighted that they didn't want a building that had two main entries. So, you know, it had a parking lot on this side and that, that side. They didn't feel like it was the best way for them to monitor the building. Um, it wasn't the most site efficient way to design the site. You know, in the event that there was no parking here, then staff members would have to come along here and then park either go in through if there was a second entry towards the back end or we'll walk all the way around the building to go to the main entry on the west end of the lot. So where, where's the library for that now? The existing library's right here. And where's the new one? The new one's essentially the same footprint. So we've started coordinating with the, the library OPM, who's now contracted to have, and we understand the architect technically isn't yet. So we got their site plan. They also did a, a revised scheme of their site plan that kind of you know lays out a little bit better with our parking lot. But we were still at the beginning stages of trying to create a parking layout that works for both buildings. Um, but we're going to hit the ground running once the architects um, signed up. Do you feel architect. claustrophobic on that site? What's that? Do you feel claustrophobic on that site? Um, I don't know if it's claustrophobic. I mean, yes, you, you, you got to, 
we will put one big park line between two buildings, but the, the idea is besides having a lot that can be shared by multiple people, it can also, we have room for green space. The idea is to create a green space where there's benches set up and kind of enhance the campus feel on this property for the overall future of master planning. And how, how many feet away from Russell Street will that building be approximately? Any idea? Russell yeah, from Russell, uh, let's see. We have dimension. <coughs> what do you think that depth is off of? Uh, I know off of this, off of the southern property line, we're looking at approximately 45 feet, and whatever that existing lot depth is. Um, I don't think you're going to get much of a green feel if you're 100 feet off the Russell Street. No, no, the, the green area, the, so this is the this is where the proposed library is going to be. The idea is there's some type of green, right now we're showing the green area here, but that ultimately can change based off of our coordination with the library folks. The idea is there's green space in between these two buildings, mm -hmm. not, not over here. As opposed to the parking lot. What's that? As opposed to the parking lot, I thought that's where the parking lot was going to be. Well, no, but this is the new parking lot. We show lawn area here, but again, that might change once we start coordinating with a lot of folks and enhance the landscape design. Um, so another thing to speak about with the site design, the idea is to create this center sidewalk that helps occupants get from you know their parking spaces to the senior center building, as well as for emergency vehicle uh, purposes only, we have an entrance off of Route 9 here that cuts through an existing vehicular path through the existing Legion parking lot. So the idea is um, we, we get our underground utilities from Route 9 into the building. And after doing so, we have an accessible sidewalk to Route 9. We repave, we stripe this side of the Legion lot, and we create directional striping so it's clear to folks that that's a vehicular path and not a place so how, how how big is the building it is approximately 12,050 square feet so you need 25,000 square feet of parking area yep. and that's what this is showing yeah that <coughs> how much parking are you showing we've got about 80 parking spaces how much how many square feet uh, is that in square uh, uh, we go uh, by square feet, not by number of spaces. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, 16,000. Yeah. Give or take. Okay. Well, sure. You're providing 16,000 square feet of parking? Yeah. Yes. But the bylaw that's, requires 25. That's not, so I'm sorry, that's not including the access aisles. So that's just okay. the parking spaces alone. Adding the okay. access aisles, you. Okay, I see you have a parking summary. Did you break it down? Uh, yes, I, I can't see it, but yeah, okay. I'm sure we do. <clears throat> um, so, well, that was kind of it for the site design. If you, Chris, can start talking about building the side, and we can get the comments. So, yeah, my name is Chris Wanty. Um, for the exterior of the building, we wanted to make sure the architecture fit within the, um, you know, the, uh, the context of the site and the town as a whole. Um, you know, Hadley as an agricultural town is, well, consists mostly of clapboard buildings and masonry buildings. So um, for the senior center, we have, as you can see, we have a mixture of um, clapboard siding with some um, shingle siding and some um, um, some stone veneer base. Clapboard siding or vinyl siding? Clapboard. It's a, it's, it's a common, it's a different material. It's not actual cedar. So it's going to be painted every once in a while. It'll be painted, yes. It's, it's about a 30 year paint. It's about a 30 year paint. Why are we putting in a maintenance required facility? For sorry, why are we putting in a maintenance required facility? Why are we designing a building that requires maintenance facility? Well, vinyl, I mean, vinyl siding is not really a long term solution. It's it's a It breaks down quite a bit for a commercial facility. Um, so we wanted to go with more of a commercial grade siding material. So we went with a, a fly ash. It's called a bull boral type um, siding. So yes, it's, it's required for painting, but it's very durable. It'll hold up over a long period of time. It's, it's built for you know, 50, 70 year building. What's it gonna cost to paint that building 20 years, 25 years from now? I don't, I don't have the answer off the top of my head. Okay. But, it's, but it's, about, it's about a 20 year paint. It's about a 20 year paint. What's it gonna cost to paint that building today? Uh, the estimate came in and I'm not sure you guys can I, I don't know, but I could think of that. The question, question of my, my, my point is, why are we putting in a building 
it's going to require 20 years from now, we're going to probably have to, I would guess it's going to, in 20 years from now, it might be a $100,000 paint job. At least 50. More. Okay. I mean, that's a big building, and we're going to put design and maintenance required. Why? Why? I, mean, I go I go back to the, the durability of the vinyl siding. It's, it's more of a residential material. The, the they make some, they the, make they make vinyl siding that's extremely long term durable for, for big buildings. And to, to, it just amazes me that we would design in a maintenance required building. Knowingly design it in. Doesn't make sense. Continue. Okay. Um, so for the uh, actual maxing of the building, um, the main organizing principle was this high volume cable space here, so I'll go to the, the rendering for it, help you do a better feel for it. So this is the this is the high cable volume space that houses on the interior the um, north on the north side the uh, library lounge space and on the south side the, the dining room. So that acts as kind of a link between the activity spaces, which is located to the east of that, and the um, the uh, office wing, which is to the, to the left of that. So like I said, the activity spaces are more to the east of this, the higher volume, um, and uh, the office wing is to the west. The, off the orientation of the office wing gives the staff really good views of the parking lot, the main entry, and the patio, which are all important to the building committee. Um, the, the other materials that I forgot to mention were, were this, was the standing seam metal roof. Um, again, just to give that, you know, add the traditional feel. We also have some dormers here that we cut into some spaces to break up the large roof areas and also just bring daylight into the space. Standing metal seam roof, what does it look like? It needs to look like shingles. It needs to look like shingles. Under the, under the village overlay <coughs> district, the, the building needs to look like asphalt shingles to comply with zoning. Okay. okay. You, can, you can make it any material you want. Yep. But that's what it's got to look like. Okay. okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, so, the, the kind of some other features of the exterior, we have a canopy that would cover from the drop-off area in the parking lot here to the main entrance. We also have the east side of the building over here, back where the activity rooms are. We made provisions for a future installation of uh, solar panels to take advantage of that, you know, large southern-facing roof plane. Um, Can you put solar panels on a metal roof? Yes. That was one of the benefits of the, of the metal roof, was you can easily clip to it. No offense. So don't take this as an offense. We had a gentleman come in here that, that specifically was told he had a metal roof on his barn. He says a huge roof. Yeah. And he was told he couldn't put solar panels on a metal roof. I don't know. What and I, we, we questioned him on I mean, which it's your business. What yeah. were you doing? Yeah. But I was surprised to hear that. And now you tell us you're putting well, solar panels. Well, that might have been for structural reasons, if it was an existing building. Okay. Um, this is brand new, so we're designing the structure so it can accept all okay. of the, well, the solar panels. Wait a minute. Okay. And uh, we're picking specific, well, for the metal panels, we had specific uh, uh, ribs on our panels to accept those clips. Okay. So it's an, you know, it would have been an easy installation. So that's kind of the, the gist of the, the, the how we developed the building with the building community. Why, so did, you you did, why did you design that building on the east side and not the west side? Well, the idea, yeah. so the idea was one, like I said, to create uh, that mm -hmm. center park lot where it could be utilized for library people, senior center folks, uh, overflow for American Legion, not create a, what we thought was a kind of inefficient site layout where a person may have to be forced to drive around the building and then walk back around the building to get to the main entry because the, the vote with <coughs> the building committee was to not create a building that had two main entries on both sides of it. So the, the idea was to create a focal highlighted main entry, and it made sense when we did that to not have a second park lot on the other side of it. <coughs> drainage. What are you going to do about drainage? Like, you know, yeah, uh, stormwater is going to be uh, <coughs> excuse me, entirely contained on site. We're going to have to have an underground infiltration system. There's really nowhere to discharge um, the stormwater here. So underneath the parking lot will be an infiltration area. And we don't test warning to say that that's okay? Yeah, yes, we did some uh, test pits as well as infiltration tests to confirm okay. soil capacity. We um, like underground infiltration. 
Okay. We just want we just to make sure. Make, we, we also got to make sure they work. Yeah, so I certain areas of town, like Mr. Roberts said, would be useless on his site. Right. So yes. So we did do test pits, confirmed uh, infiltration rates okay. as well. Who is coordinating the uh, the two buildings? Is it going to be the planning board's responsibility, the select board's responsibility, the library versus senior center? For example, just because you're here, first this with the both this, you could usurp all the parking that may be required for your building and leave the library with not enough parking. Sure. So, so somebody has to coordinate I, that and somebody has to get a picture. I'm the library trustee chair. I just want to say that we have already started meeting with these folks. We're actually meeting again this Thursday, but we have co we are coordinated meetings between the senior center folks, the library folks, and our OPMs. So we perhaps would like to see, as we do in many commercial developments, what is the build out of this site? Who's going to have the parking and what's going to be allotted to the senior center? What's going to be allotted to the library? Right now, they're short on parking. They're short on parking. They're here. They may take your parking. Will well, you have enough parking? How big is your building? And, and our OPMs are coordinate. They will coordinate. Yeah, we, we, okay, so that's, yeah, that's, that's like essential. To, we have Molly coming and David Nixon, but we're happy to invite a planning board member to those meetings. If no, I, we, you should come before the full board. Okay. We, we, we don't need to be part of the design process. In fact, we don't want to be part of the design okay. process. We just want to see a completed design of two projects. How do they mesh? Yeah. Like Mr. Zgradnik said, how's the parking working? and all the rest of the stuff and drains and everything else because we consider this it is one site it's not two separate it's not two That's separate projects yep. it is one project yeah so like she had mentioned i i started coordinating with the library opm him and i will continue to do so and we're going to set up a meeting and go through the site design to make sure both uh site layouts work for each building and uh, we can present it on, on the bottom of your drawing is where you've got the driveway through yep. the legion lot with the parking um how you, you I, I believe the school i'm going to keep on the, i'm going to call this the hooker school site to keep to make it more clear mm -hmm. but the school the, the old hooker school had a right of way through there are you in that right of way you outside of the right, right. of way no so originally we designed this emergency vehicle entry within that right of way uh, but that right of way happens to be along american legion parking we met with the American Legion folks, um, and, and that was a big hardship for them besides losing their overflow parking. So we look, re looked at this layout and we said, well, this is an existing vehicular path as it is right now in terms of how they circulate through their lot. So let's utilize that. Um, and while we're going through the, the site work and the construction project, you know, we'll repave essentially this whole work area. We'll strike that side of their parking. Um, and then I, I started coordinating with David Nixon on, you know, if town have, he needs to figure out some type of access easement at that location. I know, obviously, there's a lot of people here about the Legion and the parking, and that's going to be an interesting discussion. So I'm not trying to put you guys up. I just want to, I just want to address the small details first before we get into that particular item. Okay. Okay. Um, any other ish concerns about the main oh, lighting? Lighting is correct. I got that. Choice. There's a lot of residences around here. How was the lighting going to be? So we got pole lighting, LED, um, to provide the code required for cameras throughout the site, throughout the parking. It's actually it's actually enhanced because for a senior facility, we like to do double what is required for what's typically done for a you know, right. parking lot. So I think one foot candles mm -hmm. at the standard, we do two. Or it, it's double. I'm not sure the exact number. We do typically double it with candles. Do you do for shoebox style lighting fixtures? Shielded. Yes, yes shielded. Yes question is you've got the whole <clears throat> southerly side is all residences we want to make sure that the lighting isn't protruding onto their property either directly sure. or indirectly so that I mean you know so it's one thing you know go three miles down a road you can if they know where flows right big deal no, but here it's going to be a big deal yep. so you want to make sure no, I appreciate the comments. when you do, when you get into that design make sure that it stays on your property however you're going to do that I'm okay. you know I, I i can't see how they can turn around and take all that parking away from the legion and make the legion non-compliant i mean 
What they're going to do is basically put that legal out of business. And I don't know how they coordinated with the legion. They didn't even coordinate with the taxpayers because if they came into the annual town meeting and said, we're going to take the upper parking lot that the legion has used since 1950s for parking and we're going to put our building on top of it. I think if the people knew that, they would have said, no way. I think this whole site between these two buildings is way too small for, for these two big development. I will not support this. I think it's a joke. I think it's a big joke. I think you're doing a big injustice to the American Legion that's been there for a long time. And these guys at, I don't know how old some of them are, but they're old. And you're going to make them park <laughs> out back there and walk all the way to Legion? You walk all back. They don't have to walk all back. They pay their dues. You need to pay your dues. Wait a minute. Like I said, I just want to make sure we address all the other issues before we get into the parking. That's all. I'm not trying to put anybody off. I just want to make sure we give that one its due. Anything else that the board got a question on other than where the parking is and the building located? I suggest that there's been an implied contract with the uh, Legion since 1952. Just a minute, Mike. Okay. Just a minute, Mike. Other issues other than the parking and the building location that we want to just review right now before we get into the other one. Well, I guess my only comment is just the, the, in the layout, I, I think it's far from a campus to have that sea of asphalt. You're not going to get any cross fertilization between the library and the uh, senior center with that separation. No, I understood. So we saw a recent site plan that the library folks put together that shows green space kind of closer towards um, their building. So I, I don't know that this site plan does it justice, but I, I understand why you would make that comment. So this, one is point the, point this is the latest library plan right here. One point we, we didn't bring up is the percentage of green space available. What What is your percentage of green space according to our bylaws? It is, excuse me. Currently, as designed and with the existing, not with what's proposed, I have not yet seen that. It was, um, sorry. Is it is it ten percent requirement? Twenty percent. Was it twenty? Okay, then we were like at twenty-two percent, something like that. So we 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 have we exceed the green space based on what exists today at, at the current current location. Where is, where is it green? Twenty twenty percent, including the library. Yes, across the entire project. Property. Oh, so yeah. yes. Okay. All right. We're not in, in, including the library today, but not including the library Correct. within this proposal, whatever this is. That's Correct. exactly. Okay. Correct. Okay. Again, we would have to coordinate between the two projects. Yeah, they're not. They're not giving a percentage on this, so just be aware that we, you know, there's certain things like the library. Just for everybody's information, <coughs> the library and the senior center are indeed exempt under state law from use as far as zoning goes. But you're not exempt regarding parking, lighting, drainage, green space, and stuff like that. Okay, you can put, the, you can put these facilities any place in town and nobody can stop it, literally. Um, however, reason, reasonable zoning issues, you have to comply with, like I just said, is zoning, you know, lighting, parking, green space, and stuff like that, and size of <coughs> building up. Obviously, you got the right side. Could a good real estate lawyer stop it? I have no idea. And she said no, but I'm just curious. You should stop I five college college Inc. I mean, you can sue anything. Yeah. How, 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 what right. the success is different issues. As far as zoning goes, that's the compliance right. issue. Right. I think okay. the issue here is the town is committed to proceeding with both projects. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. Didn't we just buy eight acres in North Hadley? Okay. A lot of green no. space there. We've got the, the issues talked about, you know, lighting, parking, drainage, the main ones. Now we'll get into the ones that most of these people hear about, and that is the location of the building versus the legion of the parking. Don't you think before we go any further with this plan, that this plan is developed so we can see the entire 
piece? We did talk about that. And they are going to be talking to the library. I don't want to just talk. I want to see. They'll come back. They're they going to come back. We're not approving anything tonight. I know. Remember that. Right. We're just talking about conceptual <clears throat> plans so that before they sink more money into this plan, it's going to be put into the plan that works for the site, both library-wise and senior center-wise. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's here tonight. Obviously, they're showing essentially there's two different types of parking being shown, but again, like the gentleman said, they're talking, they need to correct that and get the layouts together because one of, one of these will work and one of these will not work with the layout they have. And that's, yeah, that's for them to be determining that, not us. We're not designing it, we're just telling them concerns. And Mr. Benchkowski, I mean, Mr. Sardinsky, you were talking about some stuff about the location too. Yeah, just. We just bought eight acres in North Hadley, in town did, and uh, it's a beautiful site, easily accessible. Uh, population of Hadley seems to be migrating towards North Hadley. There's a bunch of developments going on up there. Uh, and I just think it would be a great place for a building like this. We're talking about green space. So I wouldn't let them go fishing down the brook down there on my property. Mm -hmm. I think you don't have to get, get a um, fishing license if you're over 65. By the way, is it, an elder 62 or 65, is that the cutoff? As far as the state goes, you're considered an elder at the age of 60. 60. To get Social Security yeah. or Medicare, 65. All right. Um, other comments from the board? Yeah, I, I still, they can't give me a solid reason why that building can be flipped to there. They just can't do it. The soil can take it, but I don't want to see them destroy the region. And I will not vote for that plan at all. I'll tell you right now what I've seen, I've seen enough. <clears throat> you guys gotta go back to the drawing board. You should have told town meeting and I and I was at that town, I didn't hear nothing, and it was your responsibility to tell the taxpayers what the hell you were going to do to the Legion, and you didn't do it. And now we're here arguing who's taking who away, and what rights are you taking away from this Legion? That to me is the biggest crock I've ever seen in this town. The biggest. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. I'll tell you right now. Other comments from the people? Yes. Was there any, uh, at this uh, town meeting, and they uh, You want to introduce yourself, Brian? Brian Glazier, 30 Newton Lane. Which branch of the service were you in? U.S. Air Force. Um, the last part's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, but go, anybody can speak. Go back a long way. Um, was it brought up at all about the right of way through the Legion with, when this plan was put out? To have a right of way. I know the town owns some property. I know that that's mm. part of it. The, the, the town's been that, in the that right of way drain was in the deed. It was in the, the town. Like, the town has already put the right of way on the west. I, really had, I, I, really had I was right reading the deed online. But I mean, was this? I have the copy of it. Yeah. Okay. Was this brought up at all? That wasn't brought up at all. Was it? No. It wasn't that, that to have a right of right way through the Legion no. parking, and it wasn't brought up about taking the upper parking lot, right? No. No. Well, just. We've had a contract. We've had, the Legion, I mean, yeah. the town's had a con I believe some kind of a, it's a contract or something with the American Legion. So it's it's got an implied contract. Civil defense building or whatever in case of emergency. Is that, that's been then for, I, 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 don't, I don't know about that. I don't know anything about that. So if somebody has something like that in writing, it would be good to see it. I think there is. I think there is. I don't know. There's some so kind of an agreement. The real issue here is, and, <laughs> I think it's not going to be resolved by this board because this is town land. Nothing we can do <coughs> can prohibit or allow the use of that parking lot without the approval of the select board. So I think the select board's got to be involved in the design. They're going to have to decide about placement and they're going to have to weigh whatever benefits of having it available through to the Legion versus the senior center. So I think you're going to uh, want to be using the public comments period of the select board meetings. Mm. To that won't get you nowhere. Well, 
We don't have jurisdiction to say that uh, we, we, this is not our call to make about whether that building can be put there. No, but we can. Yeah. It's our call to accept it or not accept it. No. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. You're going to sit here and let them dismantle the American Legion, and that's nice, where they didn't say to the taxpayers and the community that we're going to do this. Why didn't they show that plan at town meeting? And why didn't they say that? And then on top of it, I get I find this that they're soliciting money for all these things in that building when the taxpayers voted to buy it. What the hell is this going on? All right. This is we're reviewing the site. No, I want to let the people know what they're doing and what they're not Take doing. Take that to the select board. Meeting. Yeah, well. Because that's where, that's where the decision gets made about whether it's going to go here or you not. You can go to the selectman's meeting. I'm not. I'm saying what I want to say here. Just one thing, that, uh, one thing to add in terms of site um, that I didn't bring up, but it might make sense to bring up. So um, we found out recently that there's wetlands at the nursery on the east side of this lot. So we consulted with the surveyor that did this site survey. He hired a wetland consultant. So we, we have an updated survey, um, but there's a 35-foot wetland buffer, kind of no disturb buffer. Um, that roughly runs along this location here. This, again, doesn't have the updated survey. But that's just another part of the conversation in terms of when you start um, adding impervious materials. Right now, we show lawn in that area. But that um, right now, that's parking lot. Yes, that's existing. Yeah, you're yes. doing new construction, so that's applicable to that, but not applicable to what's there. <coughs> Correct. Yep. Right. Traditionally, in these uh, leaching catch basins under the parking lot, <coughs> there is an overflow component, and it has to be directed into a stream. Where is your overflow component going to be directed? Uh, there would be no overflow in this case. We would design the system. In a hundred year flood with all of this parking. Both lots. Okay. Yeah, we would design it for a hundred to well, hundred years long. We're not engineers, although mm -hmm. Jip is. Uh, you realize that eventually you're going to have to go through a peer review engineering, so. Okay. Yeah, we'd, okay. we'd be designing it in compliance with the storm alarm yeah. system. So. Okay. Comments from the other comments from the audience. Yes, ma'am. The town meeting, when we got the vote, we showed a plot plan that showed where the building would sit. Just did this one right, just like this right here? That was slightly further to the west, but not a lot. Mm. But no indication that you were take parking a lot away from the Legion. You didn't say that. I was at that town meeting. You didn't, you left that part out. That is correct. The you most important that. part you left out. <coughs> you failed the townspeople. I did have an informal conversation with some of the people at the Legion um, this past summer. Um, and they asked that specific question, where was the building going to go? And I said, there's a, at that point, we were thinking it was a 40 foot buffer from the end of the east side. And I said, the building w couldn't start before there. And the comment was, well, that's the overflow lot. And I said, we're happy to make a segue from your lot, <coughs> from your lot into ours with a sidewalk so you can access the field that used to be the field, but now will be paved, lined, um, the handicap lit with a sidewalk and um, the request was made well that doesn't sound so bad could it have lighting and I said I don't think that'll be an issue so you're gonna supply a vehicle for them to these guys are older people I'm, I'm just acknowledging that a conversation was discussed that that was you know, for some reason that I don't believe under, what's coming can up I finish now. please that there was a conversation about the loss of that lot and how we wanted to work to accommodate it. They made a request for lighting, da 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 da, da. We heard them, we made <coughs> that attempt to do that. Is and I had the discussion about it would just take coordinating with me for larger events so that we could make sure there was nothing else happening so they could have the lot. Is the building committee adamant that this is the only place this building can be placed in town? 
in town? Um, that's a question that hasn't really come up. The original um, conversation with the Council on Aging Board when they were discussing whether the timing was right to go for a new senior center were adamant that they did not want to incur any additional costs for buying land, that it needed to be on town-owned land. <coughs> and the well, suggestion the was- been purchased, so you don't have to worry about that part of the I understand. And so the, um, the suggestion was made at that point, why don't we just go out to the yeah. field? And I, I, I think that if you considered other areas in town, specifically the place of the purchase in North Haven, it's a much better site for a building like this. Right. It's going to be less cramped and less disruptive to the, to I the, to the center of town. I was under the understanding that that was on hold for different reasons. You're, you're more in tune than, than I. I I haven't been updated. Uh, That's David Nixon. Did they purchase that land or not? Oh, I know they purchased it. I don't know what the plans. Did they purchase the land? The nine acres up on yeah. the uh, Stock Ridge, yes. So, the no, town, no, owns, uh, town owns the land. Yes. Uh, that would be a great place for them. Exactly. Yes, yes ma'am? Hi. My name is Megan Morash. And uh, I came here tonight to speak about the Legion parking lot. But in my understanding, I should speak that with a selectman board, not well, with you. You, you, you can. May, you can certainly speak well, about it tonight to this me. board because there are some mm -hmm. selectmen so, and the representatives here from that board, so they will hear you. Okay. As I said, my name is Meli Morash, and I'm a full-time realtor in the area, also tenant of the American Legion, last 11 years. I run a dance every Friday, and also I run a dance for the senior citizens. 50 and over, last three years in American Legion. Parking lot issue is very important to us. It is not only to the Legion, it's also the people who come from community and have a good time in American Legion. Especially in our dancers with the uh, senior citizens which come, they have to walk far away or the people who come on Friday, they leave 12.30 in American Legion, and they have to go back to, from the area you are showing, the lightning and everything, I think is a very dangerous thing to do. We had a very ha hard time when they were fixing the Route 9. We had a no parking space, neither the Legion, neither the, in my business, I'm a business person also, is running the dance. And uh, we had to have people uh, that the park across the street, which it was very dangerous for them to cross the parking lot. So I'm thinking everybody has to take that as considerations. This is what we are doing for the community. Community of the all surrounded area. It's not just Hadley. The uh, people come to dancing. And my senior citizens, it's come every uh, Sunday, once a month, and have American Legion fun afternoon. So I urge you, take that into consideration for us. Thank you. And, uh, the lady makes a couple of good points. I don't know about the design. However, the Legion right now is a senior center. Virtually every member is a senior citizen. There are very few non-senior citizens that belong to the Legion. Fact of life. Um, God bless any World War II vets that are still alive. <coughs> Mr. Phil being one of them. <laughs> um, and I don't know the right answer here. I'm not going to try to make do this, do that, except that to make these people walk across that sidewalk from the back side of the, I'm going to call it the back side of the, of the senior center because of where the Legion is, but it's actually the front side of the senior center, um, to me seems strange. I also see the reasoning of why the layout the way it is. Again. I don't know the right answer. 
but the library and the senior center definitely have to get together, come in with one cohesive plan, and is it a single parking lot? Is it a split lot? Because to make senior citizen legionnaires walk across that area, they're only going to be getting older, not young, well, it's not that many they're going to be coming in younger, but they're, they're, all, they're all old. We're all old. Um, and the correct answer has to be somewhere in there. I, I don't know what it is, but it needs to be designed to accommodate those concerns with minimal disruption to the lesion. Yes, ma'am. It also seems like you're asking for a lot of trouble to assume that this parking lot is going to be fully available for uh, big events because who's going to coordinate all of this? Is the library going to have to, if the library has a big event and somebody else has a big event on the same night, well then the Legion loses out. Or who, you know, that it seems like you're looking for for trouble in the future um, in, in all expecting to have enough room on this lot. You're acting as though the whole lot is going to be available to everyone in this organization. I think this lady hits, hits a key point. There's no reason, as they do in Florida, to combine the library and the senior center because they both have community rooms, they both have kitchen, they both have, and you could coordinate the use of the parking. That's, that's an excellent point. Uh, I, I would just say the one issue is, you know, so the, the quantity of parking spaces we currently show on this plan, we said it was 80, is. Was a, was a forecast that was done in, in anticipation of you know, enrollment with this newly designed senior center increase and people going to it. Uh, so if we move that building and you know, have 40 spaces here and 40 parking spaces here, you still have the concern of uh, you have X amount of parking and, and all these other library patrons, senior center patrons, American Legion. So I don't know that it solves the issue of quantity of parking spaces is what I'm saying. <coughs> I don't need them. And I'm, like I said, we're not going to sit here and design it for you. That's something you've got to work out together. I know they wanted to keep one main entrance. Well, if it's, if that's, to me, if that's the only reason to keep one main entrance, but allow some kind of split parking, I don't know, so that people can come in from each end of the building, I don't know the right answer. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm not going to say things. All I know is that you essentially will have I go back to my first comment. You've got two senior citizens, senior centers here, whether we like to call them or not. You've got the Legion and the True Senior Center. And they're both accommodating senior citizens, essentially by design. Um, Legionnaires, um, except for maybe a few Afghan and uh, later vets, any Vietnam area vet is a senior citizen. And anybody older than that is well into it. And we've got to make sure that it can be accommodated by those people because it's a disservice to anybody if they can't use it. I'll tell you one thing. I talked to a member on a municipal building committee, and they wanted that building put on that new land in North Happy. There's plenty of room. There'd be no conflicts there. It's a nice setting. And everybody would be happy. They didn't put no shovel in the ground here. What did they do to plan? You can take that plan and put that place anywhere. But I certainly suggest that they go to the Slutman and ask them if they can put that building on that other lot. And it would just, it would relieve a lot of tension. The library would never have any problems there. The Legion won't have any problems. As this, this, much as we're trying to gather information here, uh, I know the, the building committee representing the seniors, seniors building uh, commission here was adamant it's only going to be for seniors. Right now, the planning board is meeting in the senior center. Are you going to allow us to meet in your new building? I actually have already talked with Jim about that. Um, because I was under the impression that you were all going to be working from digitized, digitized, um, and didn't have to necessarily have all of your, we don't have storage, that's the issue. We have a great place for you to have a meeting. We have already checked with Hadley Media, they said it's a great room to um, be able to film in, um, so we don't have any issue with that, but um, 
Jim told me that you need to have access to your paper files in close proximity. And what we don't have is enough storage for all of those. So we've been working again with the library and others to talk about other scenarios for what's going to happen with this, what's going to happen with that, what do they need, and, and all of those things. We're not um, going about any of this willy-nilly and trying to disregard people. We're having conversations and trying to see how we can work together. I know it's been several months, not only once, but twice, this board wrote to the selection. Not only what's going to happen to this board, and their plan room and all this other we to this day we still don't have an answer and this to me is just plain stupidity how do you plan something when you got a conservation the historic commission tv5 the planning board all these other ones that are in this facility they're going to smash the facility we're going to stand there and now scratch your head which way do we go you guys know what, what you're going, but you're causing all these other hardships for all these other ones. You're causing hardship to the Legion, you're causing hardship to the planning board, to TV5, to everybody. And it's not your concern. Has the architect designed a senior center that has more of a public building feel to it? Public usage? No, they... You want to just... No? So, yes. it, to further yeah, answer the, the question, answer once again, question, is it going to be certainly, okay, you rule the planning board, you, you can't accommodate us. Does it mean you can accommodate other groups for meeting in your right, place? Uh, because you were adamant that at the town meeting only for seniors. So, the distinguishment came up in, in a very good way of saying occasional use in meetings, no problem. A permanent residence with storage is difficult. Well, to, to answer your is previous question, we, we have made provisions in the, the large community room for it to be used <coughs> after hours for community activities. You know, there's a separate entrance, so there's a way for the senior center to be locked down, be secure, and for that community room to still be utilized. Then um, where they all these, where they're TV5, they got records, they got film, conservation commission got records, historic commission got records. What did they do? Carry that with them? There's conversations happening to try to discuss those issues. Um, it's it's not something that is, you know, easy. That should have been all resolved before you even start construction or doing anything else. Where everybody's going to be placed. Well, I don't what know that that is the Council on Aging's responsibility, but we are trying to be part of the solution by having conversations. <clears throat> Well, as a taxpayer, I would hope that you think about things like that. I'm glad that uh, Dr. Zagodnik uh, asked about a room for in the senior center. Matter of fact, uh, uh, last uh, time we met, uh, I asked the, uh, the senior center for a room for the uh, American Legion. Whenever the, from this project, uh, the Legion will have to uh, uh, go out of business and the town is obligated to give us a room. So I uh, would like to have a room in the new senior center too. And the trouble with all this is we don't have any information. Everything is kept to a secret. Uh, uh, we were supposed to have a forum. A, uh, the architect uh, uh, offered me a, a forum. Did we ever have any more? None. And then about the, uh, 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 the senior center did uh, have in the newspaper, there will not be any curbing. Well, there's a, uh, there's a curbing from the sidewalk, I believe, and if not, what about the berm? That's a big, uh, 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 big stumbling for seniors to me. And then I did uh, suggest that the building should be uh, pushed over uh, uh, leave 125 feet uh, from the east from one six uh, 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 property and uh, that will uh, uh, be a legitimate building lot for some uh, department in the future but and then again and if nothing is done how is if the flow is traffic is going to be from the south and if you miss uh, I said, oh, golly, there's no more parking. 
how do I get to the, to the north side? You can't go around the building, and if you had this uh, uh, 125 <coughs> foot uh, space uh, reserved for future buildings, or at least at least uh, that's a uh, access parking lot for the library, for the senior center, and for the region, if possible. Thank you. It is disgusting. Wow. Everything is a secret. And for over $7 million, imagine, for a small town like Hadley. And what are we getting? No a basement or, a, or say, cellar. And for this is ideal building place. Well, the uh, water table is probably 12 or 15, uh, 14 feet down. You should have a cellar. You could uh, accommodate uh, more de uh, departments to uh, new meet there. <clears throat> Thank you. Molly. So just to clear up some of the things about uh, stated correct me if I'm wrong in any of this, but, um, I, you know, I think there's definitely some, some misinformation here tonight. Um, first and foremost, you need to understand that the select board is responsible for the buildings. Uh, it's not the senior building committee who's going to decide who's in or who's out or all of the uses around it. Obviously, we're proceeding in good faith. Um, it is a senior community center that the taxpayers voted for, the same as they voted for the library. Uh, you know, and we need to honor the wishes of the, of the taxpayers. And I'm sure that there's some people in the room tonight who may not have supported these projects, but... Again, we're proceeding in good faith at the will of um, what town meeting voted. But in terms of building use, again, that does stop with the select board. And it's not that we're ignoring um, the displacement of people, but the reality here is there is some amount of time here before the <coughs> ground is actually broken. Um, and certainly there's a lot more time before the building is actually habitable, right? So we're talking a couple of years out here. And um, in the meantime, we have the Goodman Memorial, which thanks to the current um, past library trustees is probably the best kept building in Hadley. So that building will be vacated um, and that space then becomes available. So we have asked the Municipal Building Committee to continue their good work um, to figure out how best to utilize the Goodman Memorial building. So, you know, I understand that um, some people may not be aware of that, but they haven't had any conversation with the select board to my knowledge about it, so rather than fill the void with misinformation, I just want to make sure you understand that that's not being ignored. Um, and again, uh, I'm just going to get certain David and I are here tonight because we are um, representing the select board on these committees to make sure that there's cooperation. Thank you for the, the work that you've been doing. Thank you. Um, certainly want to take the Legion's needs into consideration. I'm not, I've never heard anybody suggest that they want to harm the Legion in any way. But again, we have taxpayers that voted for a senior center, uh, community centers and library, and we need to take everybody's needs into consideration. Um, yes, we subsequently have purchased land in North Hadley. Um, I suppose that's a possibility. That land was not considered. Um, but there were many, 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 many other lots that were considered considered for both the senior center and the library. Um, this work has been going on for years now. This didn't just happen overnight. And I think some of you in the room I know have been paying a lot of attention to it. And you know that this didn't just happen. But the vote for the acquiring the land happened the same night that this was, was voted on. So, yes. and, so that, 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 that should be revisited, I, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm just saying yeah, historically here. There were other parcels along uh, Route 9 that were considered, but one of the primary considerations had to do with the bus line. Believe it or not, not every senior who wants to go to a senior center has access to a vehicle, can drive safely. Some of them take public transportation, and that needed to be taken into account. So I just, How again, many? I'm just... How many seniors take public transportation buses to the senior center currently? Any ideas? Mike, they don't report that to me. Yeah. I'm just curious. So, but what I would ask is that I, and from a select board standpoint, we have a public comment period. Um, David and I, at this point, with, uh, as long as I'm chair anyway, we're responsible for setting the agenda. More than happy to have folks in the Legion or anybody else come to the select board meetings to continue this conversation. I understand what uh, the point Mr. Dwyer made. 
But what I will at least say that I will not tolerate running the meetings are any disparaging comments made against people. These folks were hired by the town of Hadley. I don't like sitting here listening to people be attacked um, for doing work <laughs> that we've been charged to do. I don't want to see our committee members being attacked. Again, more than happy to have respectful dialogue. I always listen to people respectfully. By all means, come to our meetings. We'll make sure that it happens there. I'm a little bit disappointed in what I'm hearing tonight, and I just felt like I had to say that. One thing about your meetings, Ms. Ms. Chairman, when someone goes in there in your public comment, you talk, and there's never an answer out of it. There never. Le yeah. There are legal never rules around public comment. I don't care. I've been there several, many times, and I asked you guys questions, and it was never an answer. So, um, okay. So you're telling someone else to go over there and talk to your your talk session. As far as oh. I know, there has never been a single plan to scale showing both components of this campus. Correct. 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 So looking at this, yep. my first thought looking at this is there is not enough parking shown for the library. Correct. This is not two square feet of parking for each square foot of floor area. Okay. Yet, as Jim was just pointing out, what you show as the westerly end of this site actually seems to come down the middle right. of this traffic lane here, which means that the site may not support parking for both facilities. Yeah, we'll find that out soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, look at the boundary on the George Moriarty yeah, building lot. Yeah, it didn't talking look about. at that. That's what we're yeah. talking about right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Both are different. So what we use for kind of our work zone is edge of existing pavement. So we had, like I said, we had a survey done. This line here is the edge of the existing pavement, um, approximately. So you know, we were told, you know, in terms of between senior center and library project, that the cutoff is actually here. You know, we weren't aware of that. So this has been sent to them, and actually today I got an email where that was overlaid. On top of that, and, you know, that's when we saw there was a an overlay with a row of parking. Okay. Um, so yeah, one hundred percent, we're going to coordinate on all that. And more importantly, this does not appear to have the minimum First required step. parking at all. Right. Yep. So we now have we we seem to be getting into a untenable situation if. This parcel will not support both buildings. I think that has to be resolved. I think you're right. Because what, the one thing that I would not be in favor of here is transfer development rights. Harvard the town wouldn't qualify under its own. But one of the things that transfer development rights that we've always used is you don't need the parking. I don't see any way these two buildings need anything except the two for one. They need right. a lot of parking yep. by design. Yep. So it's not something that, well, we can get away with a little bit less parking. I don't think so. Right. We'll look so. at the function the senior had here that wouldn't like you guys had this parking lot with Pat. That's AA on Wednesdays. Well, yeah. it was on Tuesday night. We had a meeting. Mm -hmm. You yeah. had some kind of party here. Yeah. There's your, um, the uh, the Marty 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 it's not like you're going to have separate times that you're going to have an event and they're going to have an event. There's going to be many times where they're going to be at the same time. So we need yep. to make sure that the, the parcel supports both needs. Yep. So. Okay. Yes. Uh, and you know that if, if, if that doesn't meet the parking requirements for the library or the uh, senior center, and there is, you know, say those plans went forward, right? So where are they going to park? It being a legion parking lot, I right or wrong. Well, and then the, the event, you, the, the problem you get into there is, I mean, I doubt the legion would have an event at the same time as those other two. Yeah, but you know, you, that, well, that I understand what you're saying. Right? That they're going to be used. They're going to be using the legion parking. That's right. Um, for that, and you know, that's what we want to make sure of that everybody 
is a cohesive group here and that there's not a hard feeling, well, they took our park and we took their park and whatever the case may be because if we have to all work together as a team, which we should be doing, we need to make sure everybody walks away from here with as close to a win-win-win situation as we can get. Okay. We, we get a yes, ma'am. Just in accordance or follow-up to what you just said, it, th it seems to me I've been involved in town governments for a long time. I was town clerk for 10 years. And if it seems to me that Hadley is, is looking at putting itself in a position that doesn't, isn't looking far enough into the future because these are three public service buildings. They're, they're, you know, and what the seniors may decide this year, they may decide differently next year. They may order five years from now how they want to use their building and who they want to invite in. And their public activities in all three of these buildings, and the Legion does fundraisers. They don't just have Legionnaires there. Sometimes there are public events that happen there. And that's true of all of the, can be true of all of these buildings. There are lectures at the library that are going to bring a lot of people. And just my thought is that, that you don't want to, sh you know, shoe yourself, what, what is the phrase? Stick your, get your shoes jammed into to too tight a spot, you know, in terms of looking at the future. You don't want to get jammed into only being able to cover what you can do today. Speaking of the future, I'm going to face reality. 30 years from now, most of us won't be here. The population currently is aging, is getting older. However, 30 years from now, you're probably going to have a younger population, and your senior sen seniors may be far fewer with a much younger population. The senior center may not be used as a senior center 30 or 40 years from now. It may be a community center which could see conceivably more traffic, more events, different, certainly different events. And that's something that we're going to make sure of. I'm not saying we're going to design for it. All I'm saying is we need to make sure that the parking is adequate for the future and today, whatever that may mean. You know, we have a business that's overflowed on town property. And these two big businesses, the library could have programs to draw a lot of people. The senior center could have to draw a lot of people. The American Legion draw people. I mean, even the planning board, a meeting like this, where do we go? This thing is not well planned out. And I, I think that's my now, now that the town has bought that property, really, you guys ought to really seriously talk to the selectmen. You would have the best of all worlds there. You really wouldn't. You got plenty of room, plenty of parking. The town can expand. You could expand in the future. No one can expand here. Even the land to the north of this, they sent out an RFP. They never pursued it. They never made a counter uh, offer. There was land. That's not frontage on Route 9. That's not frontage on Route 47. The only where that land can benefit is in a butter. It's either to the by to the north or or here, the town of Hadley to the south. But it never was even negotiated. Land that uh, <clears throat> where the uh, rock climbing place was, they bought the land behind it. It wasn't frontage land overnight. They bought it for two or three hundred thousand dollars. I got all that stuff from the assessor's office. And there was no offer. It wasn't that, it seems that they never did enough exploring, whether it was the selectmen that didn't pursue it, and what I heard even from, from you guys at that meeting there, well, it was too much money. Was it ever brought to town meeting? No. Was, was it ever negotiated? No. And if it was, we probably wouldn't be sitting here arguing. We would probably be here all together designing something that would work for all. But not all the stuff was done. The most important part is the room. And, and you're trying to put two big monster buildings in a postage uh, lot. Okay. All right. Yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Phil. That's very true what uh, Mr. McCarthy says about the land next door. Uh, there was never any acknowledgment that the uh, thank you for uh, putting in a bid. Nothing at all. 
And not only once was it been on, it is twice. And still, there are district areas all together. It's, and the price is very, very reasonable, I would say. And like uh, we're saying, why are we having this trouble? Everything is done by one person only. And it, it's her or else no one. And uh, we are not having any means to discuss what is the problem. We've got big problems here. We're going to be correcting that. We go to the board of selectmen and stuff like that. Anything else that has been brought up? Okay. So the architects and designers are going to be looking at some stuff. They're going to work with the library. Make your comments known to the board of selectmen and concerns to make sure that a good solution comes out of this. And anybody that's in a butter, the Legion being one of them, when a public hearing is scheduled for this parcel, you'll be notified in writing and the Legion will hopefully notify its members if you're going to go to any meetings and stuff like that that they'll bring the public hearing is held for the site plan approval special permits. How difficult would it get a, you get a schematic of dropping that building onto the Hadley prop, not Hadley property? Just an idea what it would look like. Uh, can pretty it. simple, yeah. pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. pretty simple process. Yeah. Okay. Just, just assume there's going to be a fire station there, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, is how do other towns follow up 
on the implementation plan? You use the implementation plan as a checklist. Okay. And the way we had set it up, it was we had like what was prioritized, and we had you know things that were short term and things that were kind of down the road. Right. Um, but you need somebody to keep on top of that. Okay. How do other towns do that? Some set up a committee, okay. which is what you had done previously. Right. But that they they they, they weren't following too. They were just. They were, they, were, they were a planning board number two. They didn't right. follow any of the it, implementation. It, it, they it, it, they don't, it doesn't always end up like that. Right. And, and they, they weren't following through on the implementation. Right. They just, of course, they didn't have a, direction, a good direction either. Yeah. And for that reason, they just decided, well, this is what we're going to do. Right. Um, really, if they had direction, right. so really, either should be a committee or a person. Is that the all? Yeah. Because okay, it could be closed as well as it's not locked. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a sign. Yeah. 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 Ye
tapping out the $7,500 right. contract. So we can use some of that. So yep. why don't we just, why don't we make yep. that an item? Yep. Okay. B create that chart. Yep. Okay. Break okay. that chart down by department yep. instead of by priority. Sounds like, a, sounds like a good idea to start. It's a very good idea. Good idea to start with that and see how that works out. Yeah, I like that. Okay. What's that 7,500 left from? Uh, every, every year we get a, we have a contract. Every, every um, <coughs> the contract every annual town meeting, we, we, we lost $7,500 yeah. out of the plan commission. Right. Plan for exactly yeah. Larry's, yeah. Larry's stuff. And every year we make a list of things that we're going to be doing, and this is now on that list. This is the contract. This is actually on the list and move to the top of the list. Yeah. You finally got to earn your cake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of the reason that we didn't spend it all over the last two years was that we were doing so much work on master the master plan, plan, and that had separate funding That's true. as a zoning or as a um, town meeting article. So um, there were special circumstances, but I think we'd like to get back to the point <coughs> of using yeah. what we're budgeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Senior housing over. Boy, oh boy. Uh, get everybody one of each. There was two copies that you sent me, but I didn't see a difference in the two. Oh, I hope one was senior housing and one was inclusionary zoning. No, I both were senior housing. Well, then I sent you both with that. I looked at them, but I put them side by side, and they were exactly the same they thing. Look like this. They look no. close. But no, they, I specifically okay. put them side by <laughs> side. And I did one was not inclusionary zoning. Okay. There we go. That's what I thought the ship nice. I think you're right. I think you right. might have the same one twice. Boy, that's, I didn't even pick that up. I, I just made copies of it and I brought it to the table. Uh -huh. Take a look at them. See yeah, they're the same thing. Okay. So right. what we tried to do, and I, I think this was good because. Uh, Were you trying to trick us? Yeah, you did. You didn't <laughs> no, get this guy's trying to see whether you were in the reading. You did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah, I know this, this is, I think, uh, Bill sort of uh, initiated this. I think it was a really good idea. Um, because, in fact, as you're looking at this, your senior uh, housing uh, overlay district actually is an contains an inclusionary zoning. A component. Right. Uh, so you're right. It just made sense to take it out of that, make it part of this, and, and just, just applies to that. And just reference yeah. it. Yes, exactly. And so mean. that's what uh, I think I was able to do. So that would be. So, so pretty much, uh, if you go to the senior uh, yeah. housing overlay district, yeah. what came Points. out was really on the third page, 27, section 2758. And basically, all that's coming out. Yep. And what we're adding is what is in yellow. The, uh, for the affordability requirement, all projects must comply with the requirements and provisions of section uh, 25, inclusionary zoning. Yep. Perfect. And all the stuff you have. And all the ready. stuff in here is now showing up in here. Yes, here. right. It, Except a couple of things that kind of duplicated it. That's, that's, okay. Um, so that was really the only change we had to make to the senior. Overlay district. Okay. And so then it was just a matter of finding the place to, to plug it in. And then some of the other changes I made uh, was to remember we had the issue of uh, the housing authority mm -hmm. was supposed to administer this. So we took that out and we put in that they've got to hire some entity to administer because clearly the housing authority has no interest in it. Um, so the, uh, the red and the Inclusionary zoning has been deleted? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and the same thing. So and the affordable housing trust fund has been deleted? Yes. For the time being. For the time being. Okay. For the time being. That's correct. Okay. And we also took out under 2543 uh, the lieu of payment provision. So your options now are either to put an affordable component into your development. Yeah. Correct. Or, or someplace else. Someplace, someplace else. Off site. Except, except for seniors. Yes, except for seniors. I, I thought we might want to plug that in there. Uh, I thought that, yeah, kind of the idea with the 55 plus project is it's all inclusive and self contained. So that means Barry Roberts don't have to comply with none of this? 
Uh, Barry Roberts would not have the, he would still have to, he would have to physically provide for the affordable units in his project, uh, but he would not have the, uh, uh, the, the pay-in provision. Well, the, well, we took some of his money already. It's okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was then, this is now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. what, what, Barry goes under the original bylaw. Yes, that's, right. that's what yeah. he was, that that's correct. what he developed under, so yes. this does not apply to Barry. That is correct. It applies to everything. This is from now on. So he will not have to pay nothing. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. no, no he's going to comply in some way, shape, or form yeah. with the original zoning bylaw. Yeah. Yeah. You, so you, you've he, already, you've so already he solved the problem. Provide, with that. He, like he could do in North Hadley Hall. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was hoping to have tonight, because we did go through the certification training. And uh, actually, Eden is our housing planner, and she's going to be the one who's going to be doing it. And she couldn't make it here tonight, uh, but I want to have her here to talk about it, to kind of go through it, Beautiful. so you can see what it entails. Yeah. Okay. Um, she can't make it at the next meeting, the first of your month, but we could make it this, the uh, the second meeting of next month. Of March. Yeah. If you don't, if you have room. We have room. You have room? We have room. Okay, so let me see. I, I've got to switch by each long middle night around, but I think I can do that. Okay. So, so let me do that. Let's reschedule so, it. So the third meeting of March will be Larry, not the first meeting of March. Yes, second. the second meeting of March. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the third Tuesday. The third Tuesday. Yes. That's yes, March 21. It's March 20. 20. March 20. 21. Okay. What's Jessica Allen doing? She so just got a job uh, with the company right. developing uh, housing. Same. Same. Kind of thing, or uh, yeah, I think I think they are. What's her name? Into, into, uh, uh, her name is uh, Ashley Eaton. If, if you thought that workshop uh, that that that, that she workshop was the one, we went to in she was the one in Amherst. Yes. Jessica Allen yes. was yes. here for a short time. Um, it's daunting. It's what? It's it's daunting. Uh, and I was talking to uh, Mr. Roberts as an attorney in the hall. And so I asked him, so what was it that you were going to be charged for this? And I said, I understand why. Um, it really is a lot of work. Um, now, is, is rental units a lot easier than purchase? Not really, because it's the, it's the ongoing tracking of it. And it's the town's responsibility to do reporting. So you really have to track this stuff. So how does Winfield do it? Um, I don't know. But, but they, 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 they got to have a full time person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's if it's a, a if it's a like an apartment complex or a condominium yeah, development, yeah. it's so much easier to do. So Winfield is our our comprehensive permit yeah. apartment complex. Yeah. One, one of them. The Winfield family apartments are. Yeah, we should find out from them how they are. But doing. they're they're one of them. Yeah, we have several. Yeah, we yeah. have Winfield. We have the one on Campus Plaza Road. Let me make this by yeah. That's one. And the Housing Authority, of course, has the one over here on Golden Court. Mountain now. View Estates, it's called. So we got Winfield. Yeah. Mountain View Estates. The Stop and Shop. That's, those are both not associated with the uh, Town Housing Authority. Right. But that, you know, these are the ones we want to talk to. Right. To find out. Okay, so Winfield. So that was a planning board accepted voluntarily a 40B. And friendly 40 <laughs> huh? Friendly 40, friendly 40, 40 B. Yeah. Which one is that? Mountain Mountain my stock and shop. Oh, that one? My stock and shop. It was the most beautiful the one design. Of, uh, Where were you guys out? Drinking that night? Well, <laughs> gee, <laughs> you, it, it sure looks like it. <laughs> we have never been taken to, to the cleaners? To school to the cleaners like I remember yeah. his name, well, yeah, AP Everest Initials. Yeah. And uh, it was just an outright lie. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's unfortunate. Place, that place belongs in Mexico. Uh, okay. okay. So that's just okay. We'll have That's going to be good. So we'll be here on March 21st. And in the meantime. March 20th. March 20th. I thought it was the 20th. John? Wait a minute. You got the right year? March, March, Wednesday is the 21st. No, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. what the hell am I thinking? Well, I do very well, wonder, John. Uh, uh, you got a on your mind. Uh, police. <laughs> but, but, and we want to have some ongoing conversation with the state because the, the more I go through this, and in my mind, I try to like, take an active project and walk it through, 
Uh, and, and the example I was using today in the conversation I was having with Ashley was a definitive subdivision. Okay? So, I'm a developer. And I'm going to get my subdivision approved. And it's going to be large enough that it's going to trigger the inclusionary zone. But I'm not a builder. So, in fact, all I do is I build the road and I sell the lots. So, I'm going to have to take, you know, whatever the number of lots are that I need to have as affordable, so I have to put a deed restriction on those. Um, so did you became a developer, you became deceitful. Yeah. Well, and, 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 so, and so, so it's like, so I'm not even building the units now. Yeah, but when the not. units aren't sold, then I may sell the unit to you, who's a, a builder, who's going to build on a spec for a client, or I may sell it to you, who's just a homeowner, who, or a potential homeowner, who wants to buy the lot and then hire a builder to build it. Um, but I think you can see how it's getting a little... Uh, yeah. funky because what if I don't find a, a buyer for those lots and most inclusionary zoning file under a provision that says for every certain number of market rate lots you uh, you build or units you develop you have to have developed X number of affordable lots but if I don't find a buyer for this lot and, and if it's just the lot I'm selling uh, as an affordable lot um, how does that price out? You're better than the spotted turtle um, taking lots away. <laughs> it's, uh, so it's, in my mind, as I work through projects, it's easier to do for like a condo development or apartment complex right. or multifamily. Yeah. But when you're dealing with uh, you know, subdivisions, or it, it, and we have one town that does it with A&Rs, which is even more interesting uh, in terms of how do you actually make this work. Um, so that's one of the conversations I want to have. Uh, we're going to be having with the state. So what, it, what? What would you do if that did happen? I don't know. You don't know. Well, I, don't, I don't know. So I want to find out if anybody in the eastern part of the states run into that. So and maybe how we should be back into the housing effect, <laughs> uh, the uh, affordable housing trust fund again. <laughs> because if we're maybe we get out of all of it. I don't know. If we're cutting out, well, if we're cutting out payment in lieu. Yeah. We're going in the wrong direction, I think. I think there are some towns that don't uh, include some of it. They just deal with the easier Yeah, but easier so alternative. those lots are held indeed restricted for affordable lot, right? Yeah. Yes. So if the developer don't, why can't the town sell that as an affordable lot? Th those are questions we don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. Right. We don't know. So, yeah. but but again, get back to because he the, the the developer can't sell it to anybody else. Yeah. Plot, right. And, and, and but getting back to Bill's point, you'll speak. We hold this couple of zoning positions yeah. on the board. Yeah. We have until April to try to flush to it do out. to get this idea. Yeah. We talked to Ashley on the thirty first. It's very easy to leave some of this wording yes, in there. That's right. If we don't have the trust fund, we don't have the trust right. fund, but the words are in there. We work out the trust fund idea, yep. and maybe we do it in the fall. Because I think to get the, the wording for the fund for, for this spring town meeting yeah. is impossible. After the training I went through, which is what the trust fund, the housing trust would have to do, it's onerous. You know, it's I'm, a lot of it's it's a lot of work. I'm not sure I like the trust fund, and you've heard my arguments yeah. before. Yeah. We have 2,200 housing units in town. Mm -hmm. We have 280 units that qualify as affordable, and we are at 13 percent. It would take us 60 years at the rate of development we have to drop below that 10 percent threshold. Yeah. Why? why do we have to rush into an inclusionary trust fund? Because you know darn well that if all of a sudden we set some money aside and there's a committee, they will demand that we start building more affordable units, mm -hmm. even though we may have 13%. Exactly. Well, then why the, why do we even the, stick with inclusionary zoning now? I agree. Yeah, that, I, the, these, that, are, the, the, these are all yeah. good. good. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Uh, That's we, what I'm afraid of, though. We, we, just we, we, don't, we don't have yeah. the answer. Yeah. My so. opinion is we definitely need inclusionary zoning because it's poor planning if we don't. Keeps your head of the game. The downside is, like, we we've, we've learned from many many unfortunate incidences. 
the D devil is in the detail. Well, let me tell you, the details on this one are overwhelming. Yeah. And we need to address it. Yeah. The, 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 Bottom line. The, the, the administration of it is, is a lot of work. And I don't see how anybody can do it without having paid staff, uh, even if it's a, a trust. So, 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 so did Waitley and Leverton not know what they were getting into when they set up the trust? Why did they do it? If they if they, they want they want more housing, and that's the only way they can do it because they don't have sewer. But he said it's onerous to manage the trust, and yes. you've got a little two community smaller than Hadley. Same started yes. up. If, 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 if the workshop we went to, uh, but isn't the workshop more attuned to the eastern part of the state, and not in the, the workshop that we here? attended? And was it Leverett that was there then? Yes, yes. And then they were there. You can see they are doing much different type of projects. Yes. They don't have projects like this coming before them. So what they are basically doing, which is a relatively easy thing to do, is doing just gap financing to help underwrite, you know, uh, uh, people to buy homes in that town at an affordable price. Mm -hmm. But the, and it's not a lot of units. What are I they mean, that's not to? that's not onerous. What that's not what you're going to be doing. Where did they get the Revenue. Well, well not necessarily that. sure. That we we not might sure. we might do that. Sure. Sure. That might be one of the things you do. That's so right. the other thing we were talking. I, th about. I think I think the presentation you gave us, Larry, is slanted to the fact that you're biased against uh, housing trusts, isn't it? No. You no. sure? I think. I think see where we started this conversation about several months ago. He, he you were likes housing. I definitely against The only thing I I've always said, I've, I've been consistent about about housing trusts is don't expect it to be successfully administered by a bunch of Volunteers, right. you are going to need paid but, staff. But, but at the same, same, the same time, time, at the same time, you could, which, you, which could, I think you, could, you, could, you could fund that trust for five, ten years, and not have to do anything with that money. But and then decide at a point in the future that you want to do something. What's with this it. stuff? It's not like it has to be continuously managed to implement, put new housing into town. Who's to stop it? That, that, that's correct. But that's so, assuming that everybody's going to be putting money into the trust. And in fact, they're not going to try to do inclusionary and build the units as part of the yeah. trust. Well, so far, the two, the two projects that have come before us that yeah. are affected by it would like nothing more than to put money into sure. the trust. Right. It's Likewise, it's easier. everybody who has come in on APR <coughs> has paid TDR, has put money into the trust. Yeah. We have not had a single private TDR uh, a, Right. conservation transaction. And you probably won't. Right. The, 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 the difference is the TDR trust fund, so that'd be for lack of a better term, term right, for is very easy to, to administer all. and people pay because it doesn't that. have the state. Not that much. It was some that, that's a homegrown topic. Right. But the, we, the we housing trust is a state of the state oversaw the same process. Yep. Where there's they all kinds of rules and regulations and reports. And I, I showed you the DHCD manual that Robertson uh, for, for yeah. administering, you know, the, 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 the town TDR trust fund is, I doubt it's a page long, if that, yeah. maybe a paragraph that put the money into it, it goes into the town, but the town APR fund. Mm -hmm. When they get an APR project, the APR issues, no, APR details. Pull the money out under the APR guideline, which by itself is a big book, right? But the, the fund itself and have the yes. I, I think if we had plenty of trust, it, it, be, it would be as open ended as possible. We could do whatever we wanted to, and you wouldn't have to do anything with it if you didn't want to, and nobody would have to manage it for a year for years. Who, who would be in charge of it? Put it in a CD. I, I don't. The treasurer buy some I, CDs. I, I don't know if that can be done because Why? the state. I believe the guidelines on the housing trust require yearly reporting. Yeah, that's correct. But isn't that if you're using <clears throat> money from CPA the Preservation Act? No, 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 no. I mean, you are, you, uh, you, it's a state statute that governs and regulates the trust. So as soon as you create yeah. the fund, it's an annual report. Yeah, but the, I asked the woman that made the presentation over there at the bank center. Yeah, that's You could put money in it and just kind of forget about it for a while. And she said, yeah. You don't have to do anything with it just because it's there. Mm -hmm. That's right. You don't have to do anything with it. You can let it sit. You, you can let it sit into a bank account. This is the but you need to report on it every year, and there's a whole bunch of reports. We need to get the details. We'll actually know this kind of uh, stuff. I'll ask. Okay. 
That would kind of be the wrong message, Mike. We're, I think we'd be like extorting money <laughs> from a builder to. Well, clearly we're not. Well, he's voluntarily giving it. <laughs> I think. I think. It's a he's win -win for it's he has it. It. Well, If we didn't do anything with it, if we did, if we had a purpose for asking the money, and he voluntarily does. But if all of a sudden we said you're going to throw this money into a pot, yeah, we get a good purpose. Uh, Joe, an North Hadley Hall. Okay. Yeah, that that makes that, sense. That, 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 North Hadley Hall that could, could go be a way. very good project for this thing. And it could yeah. go on. And then you know, there's extra landing. But and I, and, and the Larry will be able to back me up. Well, but we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we need to get more. We need to get. You didn't send us the. You didn't send us the, the into one the affordable trust, did you? Well, I said you had a ton of stuff on the affordable trust. Um, I know you, we got the we got the thing on the requirements of how to vote for it and all the. Uh, oh gosh. Let me know. What are I know. Like we got all that. Control. Control. All this yeah. stuff. This is the. Uh, the yeah. This is the. It's the guidelines that you have to do, you know, to this, this, this one, this one, that, that was the presentation. That was the presentation. Uh, is, is one of these? I think I said it digitally. Could you just? Digit, yeah, electronically resend yep. the requirements, the reporting requirements on a housing trust, please. Yep. I, 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 I thought I was reading it too. Yep. But I might have deleted it. Okay. Um, with the, ex with the exception of obviously the question on the affordable housing trust, I think you, I like what you've done here. I think it works, and it made sense, Bill, to do it like that. You know, at the very least, I think we could uh, <clears throat> just, you know, this one's ready to go to town meeting. Absolutely. Uh, knocking the, um, uh, coordinating the senior housing overlay district, integrating that yeah. back in. So yeah. yes. that's just. Yeah, that was it. That was, that was, that's pretty simple. <laughs> now the question that we don't have in here is we know what affordable means now how, how do other towns determine we've got a subdivision how do they determine um, again let's go back to the affording affordable trust how, even if you got if even if you got a subdivision how do you determine the affordable rate yeah. on a subdivision lot yeah I mean supposedly you know the, the, the rule of thumb is uh, you determine what your 80 percent <coughs> For your medium income is, and then the rule of thumb is thirty percent of whatever your income is, is supposed to be dedicated towards housing, and so that's how they determine, uh, you know, what what is a full, what is an affordable unit or what is an affordable house to buy. So there, uh, yeah, but a little bit more interesting when you're talking about just the lot. Um, is there a fixed, the lot with a house? Isn't there a fixed rate on that? Because everybody's or up or down, but in, in our area, right. there is a fixed rate yeah. on the median income. But but it's basically Springfield and everybody else, right. and that really right. skews the number. That's right. It makes our it, it deflates the number in this area considerably. Right. However, so be it. So let's just use fifty thousand. Eighty percent of fifty thousand is forty grand. Mm -hmm. So thirty percent of forty <coughs> grand, which would be. About a third of 40, <coughs> about fifteen grand, yeah. about about fourteen thousand a year, yeah. about a thousand, a little over a thousand dollars a month <coughs> to go towards your housing. That's right. Now, 
That's including your house and your <coughs> lot. You can't buy a house in Hadley. I mean, a lot in Hadley for about that yep. for that price. Yep. So the lot is going to be dropped in price by a massive amount, yep. so they can afford to put a house on it yep. that meets the. I think I think there might be fifty. I think Larry. I think number that a ballpark number that uh, Barry was using about fifteen hundred a month. Yeah, something like that. I mean, just good. under fifteen, about fourteen hundred a month. <coughs> Which, I mean, that's that's you know that's about a two hundred eighty thousand dollar house or yeah. some ballpark figure, yeah. which isn't bad when you consider the price of a lot. That's not a that's very. That's a lot and the house. Yes. Yes. Holy crap! Yeah. A lot is. So, so what that's, that. what that's what I'm saying. The lots in Hackney are a hundred something thousand dollars. That's what yes. a few year, years ago, like coming up on ten years ago now, um, I represented someone who bought a the last lot in one of the subdivisions off Shattuck Road. He did get in a bidding war with the builder, 179.9. And for about eight years that was the top price for a single building lot. Holy what, right now the town is assessing, and I know this for a fact, because I looked at recent um, land valuations for a different reason. A 40,000 square foot building lot in Hadley is assessed at $132,000. Yeah, the assessment, the town is lowered in market. Oh, well, I'm right, saying, yeah. even if you use $132,000 yeah, as a the price of a building lot, you can put, uh, you could, yeah. you could build a house and put it on there for about a hundred grand. Which is why it works a lot easier when you're dealing with a complex or a multifamily. So right. it's almost like we have to encourage, we have to solicit 100% um, affordable, like the um, Mountain View. That's, I think, Cap owned it, yeah. or whoever is Hap, yep. Hap is now. Wayne Fikers? Um, but that's 100% affordable, yep. as opposed to Winfield, which is only 20% affordable, but still qualified for. Yep. Um, yeah. So it seems like a better way than trying to shoehorn an affordable unit into a, a develop a subdivision yeah. is to go out and find um, basically a developer who will develop 100% affordable. Yeah. Another thing is, um, let's use the, the North Hadley Hall. Assume you could get eight apartments there. If you put, if you made two of those affordable, and the other six market rate, I believe that qualifies under forty B for all. But eight lots is affordable. Yeah. On that, on that, Larry Roberts could take all his units, put all market value on on his project there, and use that to put his affordable, and then take. Uh, what's his name there with his subdivision? Jolinas. Jolinas. And use that, you let them pay into that. Yeah, that, that, is, that is absolutely true. Yeah. And those are something that, all I'm saying, they, these are all possible and we need to explore that. Right. But that would be a positive thing. Yes, because it would do a bunch of good things. Right. And when you, when, you, when, you, when you deal with, do with, with a subdivision development, it, it would solve and you take a look at how uh, affordable those affordable lots are going to be going for, that's going to jack up the price of all the other lots to make to compensate for that. Uh, because the developer is not going to, out of the goodness of his heart, but if he take can, a loss on it. If he can go off site, then he can get his prime on everything. But if he goes off site, he's still got the same issue of having to buy the land. And that seems to be... Or he could revamp a house or something that owned the house, can he? But he's still got to buy it. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, he buys a building lot in the fact yeah. that he it. Yeah. He said, there's, I mean, there, there's, there's many possibilities and we need to get more out of it. Yeah, you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> keep you my passes bedtime. The uh, we, we need to get more info on this affording how yeah. the, the, the details on the housing trust yeah. because 
I don't think anybody is 100% against it. It's just that the unknowns are saying, I don't like it. Yeah. And, and maybe it's not a good idea. I'm not going to deny that. But we need to get the details to know because we have different ideas yeah. on this. The only problem I see with, with the trust is just you need professional staff to visit her. That's, that's, that's not, really it. Not if you don't do anything. Not if you don't do anything. Do anything. Well, that's that's true. true. If this is not, a, we're not if well, we're okay. no. we're, we're close. We're, we're, we're in not. that thing. Is there any group in the state, and there's got to be, yeah. does somebody, let's say you've got 400000 in trust fund, and you want to do nothing with it but what it's set. Yeah. Is there some group in the state that will do the report for us because we're not spending any money. When it comes time to spend money, then it's a different yeah. scenario. I'm, yeah, I can say yes, but you're gonna have to pay them. Abs obviously. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm have a report you have to Obviously, we're gonna have to pay them. And, yeah. we, and if it costs, I don't know, 10 grand a year to pay them, it might be worth it. Yeah. So I, I'm sure that, you know, we, <clears throat> for instance, we are using a contract accountant for the town now. Uh, and he has, contracts with multiple other towns to mm -hmm. do town accounting. You'd almost wonder if he couldn't do something like this. Yeah. yeah. I can find out. That, that's exactly correct. Once we know what's required, yeah. can they do it? Because if we're only looking for a report. Well, actually, we'll be able to talk about the reporting that has to be done if you know we're the monitoring uh, agent. Uh, yeah. You know, because all I'm saying is we're not, if we intend to spend no money, let's say, for the next five years. Right. And we're just going to issue a report once a year by the state guidelines. That shouldn't be too bad. Mm -hmm. Now it comes time to implement. Okay, now we're going to do something. And maybe even then, right. it's going to be less expensive to hire a company. Okay, we have X amount of money. We want to do this. Help us. In fact, that might be another area for planning by the planning commission. Well, well here's the other bit, which is I'm retiring in June. So there's a there's the where where is the thing called <laughs> consulting? I know that. There you go. That's <laughs> a job. Are you going to throw out a big party thing? Uh, uh, I haven't. Uh, probably not. Larry, uh, I you're, you're going to retire, Richard. What are you going to do? Uh, spend half the time with young son in Mexico and half the time. Uh, let me put it this way. Spending the cold weather with my young son in Mexico and the warm weather with my other son and my grandson up in Greenfield. Okay. So I'm going to be split my time. Okay. I've got some good spots for you on Royal Laredo if you're close to a border town there. So, yeah. actually, well, he actually listen to you on it. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind all this sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. we'll, we'll, we'll be taking all of you. you know. uh, we actually, uh, the workload has gotten really hard, heavy for me. We've got a lot of towns now that are doing this. And so I actually convinced them to hire another land use planner um, with municipal experience. Um, and uh, uh, so we started going through that process, and in the meantime, actually what happened was we, we always go down to Mexico and visit my son between Christmas and New Year's. And my wife had to go back early on uh, New Year's, and I stayed a few more days. And uh, the last time I was there, we're down in the Mexican wine valley, and we're at a vineyard, and we're sitting on the patio, and we're sampling the wine. And it's 80 degrees out, I've got shorts on. Stop it. And it's, Stop it's it. a beautiful view. Stop it. And I fly back, and the next day we get that January 4th oh, blizzard. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now I'm out there with my snowblower, yeah. which breaks down. Yeah. So now my wife and I are out there shoveling, and we both go, Why are we doing this? And it was like that point, it was. Last, this is the last one that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so think, I think he gives fever delivery. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. And so now the person I was going to have sitting next to me is now going to be sitting here. Um, and we actually interviewed with a hired person named Susan. Okay. Uh, she's not a municipal planner, uh, but she does a lot of village uh, center development, but she's also on the planning board in Storrs, Connecticut. Okay. So she, she knows what you guys go through. Okay. Good. That would be so she will be weaning her in. But, but on this, the housing stuff, it's going to be Ashley. Okay, that's why. Yeah. But, <clears throat> okay, so you'll be wearing, bringing in a rough to introduce her. Yes. Sometime. Yeah. She starts in about a month. Okay. So. Good. Thank you to meet her. Yeah. Good. Anything else? That's all I got. Good. So I'll go back, take this back, see you.
second meeting next month. Or Tuesday, 20. not Wednesday, right? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we'll be, we'll be able to bring Ashley back. That's why I told you it was Wednesday, because you tricked us on this. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> what do you call one thing? Payback. Our, MS4. Oh, we oh, have yeah. someone's, we have a contract. We have a grant or something with someone else from PVPC. <clears throat> uh, was that Patty? Or, no, oh no, Corin? That's Corin. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to a MH something conference at the, at the, at the, uh, Northampton DPW DDOT yard yep. on the 20th. Okay. That one's free, I understand. That, that would be the one we go to. And yeah. then there's another stormwater course in Springfield that I'm going to yeah. on the 28th, I think it is. Okay. That was 75 bucks. What is that for MS4? They're all about MS, yeah. M M MS or MH4. The, MS4? Yeah, it's, it's the new stormwater standards. Yeah. yeah. And so I was working with Marlo and David and Corin yeah. on, I think she came up with some recommendations. Yeah, I think she's trying to get it integrated and coordinated with all the permitting that the town yeah. has to do. So the question was whether we we're trying to fit that in for spring, May, okay. or fall. And there was some question about whether MS4 was going to be deferred or delayed. They keep doing that. Um, okay. Much to the uh, pleasure of most communities, because it's taken them a while to, uh, you know, yep. uh, to work it in. I know that there is, right now they're saying that they want it to be implemented this summer. Yes. And from what little I've been able to gather, this is one complicated bunch of stuff and I don't see how anybody could do it. It's going to negatively impact communities more than developers. Yes. Um, yes because, because if you're starting from scratch, it's pretty easy to accommodate. But if you're taking a road you already got and you're widening it or something, uh, now you've got to uh, make some major uh, adjustments to the, the stormwater management. If I haven't already, I will send along Corin's recommendations. <coughs> okay. Uh, I think I did, but yeah, there was a whole bunch of stuff. I I did get yeah. something about it. She kind of said to hold off on it right now. Okay. If I remember. Yeah, but this is a big thing. Yes. And it's, it's going to really impact communities. Just just the record keeping. There's all kinds yeah. of GIS mapping required, and all your outfalls yeah. and your. Oh my goodness! Well, why didn't the DPW? Have we're not. We're not required. We're not going to be doing the GIS that to get the other stuff. All I'm saying is, it's a huge task. Yeah. Well, Larry says for the town. Yeah. Yeah. Our re our requirement. Our part of it is really the zoning issue. Right. Updating our zoning bylaw, but for the hot, the DPW department to comply with this. Right. Yeah, no, if that's they put every department employee on this, they couldn't get it done for that's the summer. That's the appropriate use, use of the word onerous, Larry. Uh, it's also, it's also, or also unfunded mandate. Uh, yeah. Unfunded mandate. Yeah. So we'll be looking at updating our uh, stormwater management again. and maybe some changes to the subdivision regulations. Yeah. And then possibly, they'll, they'll, we'll probably get tasked with doing this. I don't think we need to do anything to the general bylaw for the simple reason that the general bylaw was written so that nobody would be grandfathered. Right. But going yes. forward, you're going to comply with zoning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, typically the way I do it is um, I would uh, I would have the stormwater regulations adopted as a separate document that all the other ones uh, reference and include uh, subdivisions because you want it to apply to subdivisions as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the subdivisions do uh, uh, wetland permits do uh, zoning special permits do. Uh, pretty much everything does. So, would you just touch base with Corin sure. and see where we where we are? Yeah, just 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 see if the recommendations she's making are consistent with the recommendation or the recommendations you just laid out. Okay. Um, I, I didn't. That's not how I understood what she was suggesting, but I may have just skimmed it. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Very Stay warm. All right. I don't know.
Okay. okay, we got a Bailey okay. Hampshire Gazette invoice to pay for 185.16 for the public meeting notice and they put it on it with the reference points. So moved. Let's look at this one for a second. Well, that was for the uh, dual public hearing we held at the end of uh, um, January for uh, the home occupation, no, for the Sesame apartment and uh, Jolinas' uh, sub subdivision. Sub and Bob. Yeah. Bob, yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Motion to pay. We have a motion and a second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passes. Five to zero. And we got a no, 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 I'm looking for something I got from Chile. Where is it? From who? Chili's. Chili's gave us this for their sign. They want to refacade the building. We we're looking for the sign details, and they've given us the sign details. We have for two signs on a building, one on the front. Basically, where there are signs now, they're just going to duplicate them. It's okay. It's a corner of the lot. Yeah. And they were looking for me to approve it, and I says no, and they bring it to the board. I'll make a motion to approve the facade change. Second. Well, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. You can say that. That's that. Um, John did get some accessory apartment bylaws from Northampton and Amherst. Yeah. And <clears throat> they have a detached accessory apartment owner occupied. The Northampton one has a maximum, where is it? Uh, they have a maximum size. There's 800 and 900 with, with us. Uh, Accessibility. <coughs> Nine, okay, Northampton has a 900 square foot maximum uh, apartment size of an accessory apartment. Amherst has a minimum of 350 and a maximum of 800. But you, they can go to 900 by making it uh, it's a handicap accessible. Handicap accessible. Oh yeah. Okay. It's a minimum 350, maximum 800. But if it's handicap, if it's an ADA compliant, they can go to 900. That takes care of the minimum square footage concern. 350 is a. It's almost. It's a. It's a 12 by 20 building, roughly. Yeah. Uh, my, my biggest concern about accessory detached is the tiny house. I have other concerns with it, but I think three. Well, why should it be so small like that? Well, three fifty is kind of small. Right. I wonder if you can go to something like four hundred or five hundred. Right, maybe five hundred. Then you're talking a twenty by twenty five, twenty by twenty five building. I don't know. That's something. Ask the building inspector. I asked him about that, about is there any state laws? He said no. That, you remember you asked about... Uh, well, I know that there's a, there's a state law on minimum house sizes. It's called snob zoning. But they're looking at, usually those have a, addressed homes that are like, you know, no house smaller than 1,500 or 2,000 square feet. Well, we're not talking anything in that range. We're talking much smaller than that. I'm, I'm curious, I mean, Permits are asked for every year in Amherst and Northampton for something like this. You know what I mean? You'd have to go ask them. Yeah, I'm just curious. I don't think it's significant. That's well, they also, thing. because the, both of these towns allow apartments by right, I'm going to guess they have very few accessory apartments mm -hmm. requests. Yeah. This. You know, I, I just think this—that's how this is going to do. It. It's allow someone 
that's elderly that can't afford to stay in town to to do something like that to live into a smaller thing or and rent it. You know, if they, they can't afford to live here, then they're going to have to take a mortgage out to build this place. I mean, it's a Bu take take it and either build. Mike's point is a very good point. B building an accessory apartment, detached, or especially converting a garage detached, is going to be considerably expensive. Per square foot, it's going to cost more than a, a big house. No, just because so. you got to put the interest, you got to put plumbing, heating. You, you got to get it. You got to do that in, the, in a new house. Yeah, but no, per square no. foot in a larger house is going to be a you lot. You don't less. have to put a foundation. You build it. Well, you got to take the foundation, you really have Jack Hammer, put it and tie it into a septic system, or put a septic system no, in. No, so that's no big deal. Or the expensive. It's, it's, then, then you got to then you got to convert it to be comply with building code. No matter what you do, I mean, they come in for an accessory apartment now. They have to comply with all that. Well, not necessarily. They the what do you mean this not is, necessarily. If, well, if, if you if you have an existing house that's big enough, a lot of some of the accessory apartments we've seen, all they've had to do is put a kitchen in. Yeah, but a lot of them they came in and they asked and they built a whole big addition. That is correct. Right. So that's like just building a whole new new building. I mean, the, the only thing is, I don't think you're going to find very many people converting a garage. You don't know because you didn't, you ain't got that opportunity for for them to do it. Well, figure it out financially with Mike. Mike is the good. What the hell does he know about building? I think he knows. Yeah. If people can't, my point is this: if people can't afford to live in Hadley, they probably don't have no, enough money to take out a bank to build a well, place. Well, the like way this. the taxes and if they did, why would they want to do that? The way the taxes. Yeah. Are why would you take out a reverse mortgage? Well, like guys like you, you, you don't have to worry. You got too much money. You, you can give people the option to do it, and they, they can run the economics. <laughs> I'm retired. I'm dipping in my first. Yeah, year. you're right. <laughs> You got your, you, you still got your first communion money. What the hell are you talking about? Anything else? No, <laughs> we'll adjourn. Uh, no, that's it. That's it. All right. Move we here. We have a motion, a second. This All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting of history, thank you, and thank you, John. Thank you, John. This is almost like the slot machine.